Hey guys, happy May. Happy May. I'm sitting down to film this favorites video and I'm realizing, gee, it feels like an awfully long time since I filmed a favorites video. I totally didn't film one for March. Sorry about that, <laughs> it just kind of slipped off my radar. We were in Disney World um, during the last week of March and then I just had a lot of other content to post, Disney related content and back into my spring fever purge series and whoops. Anyway, back with favorites today, sharing some of my favorite things from the month of April. Uh, as usual, I will split this up by categories. The lifestyle is the overarching theme, uh, but clothes and accessories, personal care, home goods, uh, multimedia, tasty treats, and then my mommy picks at the end for my one of my three-year-old. Things that I'm loving for them, they're loving for themselves, that sort of stuff. Okay, clothes and accessories. The first one I'm wearing, it's not this scarf, although I rediscovered my scarves. I mean, I knew I had them, right? But I just like kind of think, again, things falling off your radar. They fell off my radar. And then when I did my big purge through of my closet, I've been wearing them a little bit here and there ever since. And that's one of the great things I find about going through your stuff, like really going through all of it. You find some old treasures that you just kind of slipped out of the habit of using or wearing or whatever. And I've been really enjoying wearing my scarves again. Anyway, I digress. I think this is an old BCBG scarf. I can't link it for you. It's years and years old. But anyway, underneath it, <laughs> that's awkward, is my first favorite. It is no surprise that I talk about t-shirts a lot because I basically wear a v-neck here let me take this off just so you can see it better a v-neck t-shirt every single day my favorite mommy mom mama form my mommy uniform is a basic t-shirt and jeans and then layer on a cardigan if it's cooler some comfortable shoes which we'll talk about in a minute good to go and maybe if I'm feeling fancy I'll pop on a scarf. So anyway, over the last few years, I've gone through several, you know, infatuations with brands that I've loved. But over time, I have found that, like those, oh, I forget the name of the brand now, the ones from Nordstrom, is it Carson? No, I can't remember the name of the t-shirts. They're really beautiful, very silky soft t-shirts. They just get ruined so fast. I tend to rub up against, um, like counters just by like leaning over them, doing dishes, leaning over the crib, at the changing table, and get these little holes kind of around where my um, fly is on my jeans, like where the shirt drapes over that part. And those shirts all look gorgeous, and I love them. Just did not stand the test of time. And I ended up going through them so fast. And then I really liked, um, Target used to have the Morona brand, but they phased that out. Well, now they have a couple of different brands. They have a New Day, and then they have Universal Threads, which is supposed to be, I think, more of their teen, I don't know, juniors uh, department. I don't know if it is or not. They make really nice basic tees. I don't think you have to be a teenager to wear a basic tee. And they're pretty inexpensive. They go on sale sometimes. I can't remember off the top of my head how much they were, but I feel like I've gotten the t-shirts for like eight bucks before. Um, maybe on a special sale or something, uh, but I'll have them linked below. Uh, when I did my purchase of my drawers, I got rid of a whole bunch of t-shirts and some of them were the Universal Threads ones. And yes, they do get holes in them, but I find that they get holes in them a lot less quickly. <laughs> and I'm really rough on the t-shirt. I guess I rub up against counters a lot. I mean, un I mean, unconsciously, subconsciously, whatever the word is. But I found that they actually lasted a lot better and are much less expensive. Um, interestingly. So I replaced them. I bought, I don't know, six or seven new t-shirts. Um, and with the Universal Threads brand, I find that I, I like to size down in there. Usually Target t-shirts I find run so small. Uh, but a regular shirt I want to wear as a medium and I don't want it to be too fitted on me, right? I want it to sit nicely but not be like tight. Uh, and in Universal Threads, a small is perfect for me, which usually would be a medium in any other shirt. Um, so just sizing that's just my experience with sizing if if you're interested in knowing anyway i love the shirts love 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 them my favorite one is this one with the little black pinstripes on it i love it so much i bought myself a new pair of sneakers for this year i tend to repurchase these once a year because i just wear them into the ground i have terrible terrible issues with my feet i have terrible bunion on my right foot that has gotten really bad since I went through two pregnancies. 
Um, your feet tend to change. I mean, not everybody's feet, but a lot of women's feet will change after childbirth. And that's what I've been seeing, you know, foot doctors for as long as I've been an adult. Um, so like 15 years, right? And they've always been t told me, don't get any sort of foot surgery until you are absolutely through with your childbearing uh, because your foot can change dramatically. So that's probably in my future um, to have, have the bunion address because it's just not fun at all and it's not comfortable and um, it's really, really hard to find shoes that work with my feet. The Mizuno Wave Riders, I believe they're called. These are actually a running shoe, but you can wear a running shoe for walking. It's fine. I wouldn't recommend a running shoe if you're doing any sort of lateral training. So cross training where you're doing a lot of lateral movements because it's just not enough stability in the ankle for that. But for regular everyday stuff where you're basically just moving forward and backwards, <laughs> mostly forwards, you know, this sort of shoe that's designed with that motion in mind is fine. And they don't look extra wide or anything. I actually have a very narrow foot except for where the bunion is. So I, it's a little bit, it adds another layer of difficulty in finding shoes. Don't get me started. I could go on and on about the difficulty in finding shoes. I don't know what it is about these shoes. They don't hurt my feet. They're comfortable. I can put my custom orthotics in them and they give me all the support I need and without any pain at all. No rubbing, no chafing no tendon pain, nothing. So those are great. Um, and I'm sure they make great running shoes, um, but that's not the, I wear a different kind of running shoe um, that I'm hoping to break out again very, very soon. I'm gonna try running again. I feel like I'm getting stronger, I'm ready. Okay, personal care. This is something I've sat on for a while. It's like, do I share this? And then I'm like, why the heck not? Um, so this is called the Epi Wand, and it's magical hair removal. It's really not that magical. My box is really janky looking, so I apologize for that. So this is what this is. It's basically just a very tight coil with two like handles at the end. And this is what I use to maintain my mustache. Yes, I have a stash, this kind of stash. Again, another gift from childbearing is now I get, I've always had hair there, but it's always been easy to manage with just like bleaching or whatever, but it changed a little bit. I wouldn't call it like a full on, I mean, people, we have facial hair, even women, it happens. And I don't know about you, but I like to address mine when I can. Now, I'm not very good at keeping up with it. I probably should do it much more often than I do. In fact, don't look too closely. Uh, but this little tool, I really don't like waxing. I tried at home waxing, I was terrible at it. I don't really have any interest in going to have have that waxed at all, like no interest at all. Um, and you're really not supposed to shave like your face because it makes the hair grow in stubbly and weird. Uh, at least that's what I've been told. This is basically like tweezing. It's like having 20 tweezers all at once. Um, and I will link a video, if I can find it, the video that I've that drew, um, led me to this, where the lady actually demonstrates how you do it. I won't lie, it is not pleasant to do, but you get used to it really quickly. And the first time you do it, you feel like, oh my gosh, it's a million daggers in my, on my upper lip. But then it just gets easier and easier and it's really not a big deal at all anymore. But that first time it's like, whoa, because you're just not used to it, it's unexpected. But it works and it's really fast. It only takes me a couple minutes to like do the whole lip area um, if I'm in a pinch doesn't make my face too red, so I can even do it right before I'm going somewhere. I mean, it will cause the skin to flush a little bit, but nothing like, I feel like waxing would make me so red for so long. Um, I haven't had it, my lip or my eyebrow waxed in years. And honestly, I probably should have my eyebrows done at some point, but I just don't care enough. Anyway, wanted to share that here if you're interested. I warned you about the first time being painful, but then it gets better. I'll leave it at that. I could make a bad joke, but I'm not gonna make a bad joke. Okay, home goods. I was so excited. One of my favorite YouTubers released a product line. And I remember this Brittany Vassour, and I've talked about her before. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing her last name right, but I hopefully I am. I've mentioned her before in favorites. She's a very popular YouTuber. She does organization, speed cleaning, home DIY hacks. And then she also does some vlogging, which is a very cute two-year-old boy. 
and I just really like her personality and her attitude. She's very down to earth, she's very grounded, um, and she's very relatable. Um, anyway, I was so excited when she released that uh, announced she was coming out with a product line and she didn't announce what it was right away then. Just I knew right then and there that I would buy whatever it was because I wanted to support her uh, as, a, as a creator. And then when she released that it was essential oils, therapeutic grade essential oils, I was like, well, okay. I've been meaning to try essential oils for years and years and years. I get sent them a lot and I always just give them away. I don't know. I've just always been a little hesitant to try them to be honest, but when Brittany released hers, I thought to myself, this is it, I'm gonna give it a try, I'm gonna really give it a try. She has a beautiful diffuser as well, um, and she just restocked, hopefully all of her items are still in stock, because her first, she just launched these um, like a m couple months ago, and they sold out so fast, and I was lucky to get both kits right away, and then she just restocked a couple weeks ago, and I was able to get the diffuser, which sold out within a couple of hours of her first launch. So I don't know if any of this stuff is currently available, but I know she will be restocking because obviously her business is going well um, with her, you know, first foray into merchandise. And you, I will link her video where she talks about her company and how and the journey to create the, these products and all the thought and care that went behind this. So I trust her, I trust her brand, I trust her products, and that's what gave me the push to start um, diffusing. And I love. I love it. Um, so she has two kits currently, the day kit and the night kit. I'll show you. The day kit is my favorite. Honestly, I don't, I haven't really gotten into using the night kit yet, mostly because I only had the one, I had one diffuser that I had, but now I have two because I just got the other one from her. The other diffuser I had, I just bought on Amazon. I actually used it as a humidifier when I had Donnie as a newborn. Or was it Cece as a newborn? I used it as like a mini humidifier. I didn't put any oils in it. Anywho. I can bring that upstairs now because I want to have a day and night. I want to do like day on this floor and night upstairs. The DIY part of the kit is that you can make, it comes with um, four essential oils. So the day kit has peppermint, grapefruit, mandarin, and lemon. And then it comes with a carrier oil, coconut oil, a little funnel, oh mine is in the drying rack, a bottle that you can diffuse your own fragrance blends into, which I have, and I just did actually, that's probably why that's not there, and a little dropper bottle. Um, so you can make your own things. And then it also comes with all these recipe cards, um, information about each um, oil, different blends, um, information, dilution guide, recipes, lots of recipes. And I just love how thorough it is. The patching, packaging is gorgeous. I'll open up the night kit so you can see it. Uh, and I just love it. And I really love the diffuser that she is selling. It's just beautiful and I love that it lights up. I mean, mine lights up too. It's a setting you have to pick, but it's mostly supposed to look like wood so it doesn't glow like this one does. Anyway, the night one has frankincense, lavender, yang yang, and bergamot. You can see, now you can see everything kind of better. I'll hold this up a little closer because um, I haven't really dug into that one yet. I love it, I love, I love it so much and I love supporting her and her business endeavor because I relate to her and I want to support her. I want her to see her succeed. Um, and she is just fabulous. So that's definitely a home goods favorite. And kind of another, you know, personal care favorite. I mean, I've only just started doing this, um, but I made, for the first time, made my own um, essential oil blend, which is peppermint citrus, which is my favorite, um, that I diffuse just uh, like a drop of peppermint and a drop of lemon or grapefruit or mandarin or some combination thereof. And I made a little, blend with the coconut oil. It's like fractionated, fract I don't know what the word is. Anyway, and I love it. It's peppermint citrus and it's just, it's me. I don't wear perfume like basically at all anymore, but I've been, I like that and I'm trying, trying that out. For multimedia, a lot of my multimedia picks right now are <laughs> mandated by what my three-year-old is most into in terms of like music or most anything I watch. She is all out, all out obsessed with the Mary Poppins Returns soundtrack. We listen to that every day in the car on repeat. We sing the songs at home all the time. We have the movie too. We've only watched the movie with her once or twice. She doesn't watch whole movies yet. She really just doesn't, it isn't interested. She'll only She'll like play during the movie and then when a song comes on or a dancing number or some combination there, then she'll pay attention. But 
she's just not interested in watching a whole movie yet and that's fine there's like no rush for that right but she does love the the numbers um that they do in the in the movie and don and i love it we saw it in the theater when it came out we both really enjoyed it um so we've been listening a lot to that soundtrack but just okay because i like the music and then I did make time to watch Brene Brown's Netflix special that she just dropped a couple weeks ago, uh, A Call to Courage. If you haven't been around with me for any length of time, you, you don't know, but if you have, you know. I'm a big Brene Brown fan. Um, she is, um, she researches shame for a living, which is just an incredibly interesting topic and applies to everybody and everything and every situation of life. Um, but watching her speak is really really inspirational and just i don't she speaks to me through her writing through her speaking it's one of my bucket list goals is to see her speak in person um and i highly recommend the special um it's on netflix i think it's about 75 minutes long and she's just so relatable a lot of i remember a lot a lot of what she's talking about reminds me of her book daring greatly so I think that's probably what the talk is based on I'm not sure she's written another couple of books since then um, but it's just it's amazing incredible and she's really really good at kind of deconstructing the human condition um, and that is always interesting to delve into in my opinion okay tasty treats this is kind of a cheat because I've only had one of these but I'm currently obsessed like I'm so obsessed. I had one of these on a whim at from at the grocery store. I, I bought as a snack when I was there shopping with my kids and they were having their little snacks. I was like, I want a snack too. So I bought this and I was like, this is the best thing ever. So I've tried kind bars before. Meh, they're okay, right? You have to have them when they're fresh or they're like really hard to chew. I really like this one. This is the um, dark chocolate almond mint. I don't know if it's a newer flavor or not. It is so, so good. It is so, so good. Obviously, it has a lot of nuts in it, so keep that in mind. But it's dairy-free, and it's got pretty good ingredients, and it's just delicious. 200 calories. It's almost like having dessert. That's what it feels like to me. Um, it's delicious. So, my new favorite tasty treat for sure, even though I've only had one. But I couldn't think of anything else that I haven't already talked about, because uh, I tend to eat the same things. Um, and then last but not least, mommy pics. I showed these on my Instagram stories at Easter. I got these for the kids' Easter baskets. These are little mini house books that I found on Amazon. We actually have one out in Utah that's a barn that Cece likes a lot. Um, and these are just so cute. So it's basically a board book that's set up in like a little house. In this case, it's a castle. This is the Enchanted Castle. And then I also, so this one I had put in Cece's basket and the other one I put in Donnie's. This is the uh, Mother Goose's house one. Now, both kids share the books, but Donnie definitely got into this. So we've only had this for, I don't know, like a week and a half. He's already done this to it. And I saw this on the reviews on Amazon that people were like, oh, the binding comes apart. Well, He's 14 months old. He destroys pretty much anything he touches. <laughs> I love him to bits, but he does. He chews on things, he throws them around. So maybe this is better suited if you're worried about things lasting the test of time. For a slightly older child, like my three-year-old is not gonna ruin this. She's just not. And she's not the most delicate with things either. She basically has torn apart all of our pop-up books, which are extremely fragile and probably meant for older children, but she loves them so much I would never not let her look at them, you know? And it's okay, but even with, she's not super careful, she's not gonna break it, right? So I, I have some bookbinding glue. I'm gonna glue this back together and hopefully it will um, survive. But that's just a word of caution. Um, they're pretty reasonably priced for, for what you get, I think. And again, if you don't have a child that's going to, you know, destroy everything in sight within a second, they'd probably be a good fit. But um, I will link these below. They're just super, super cute and great little gifts. Um, and my kids absolutely are obsessed with them, obviously. They're already getting a ton of use in just a week and a half. And then last mommy pick, these windbreakers from the gap. So this is Cece's second windbreaker. Her first one was white with little colored stars on it. These are the gap windbreakers. I think they're called wind busters. Um, I bought them new ones because Cece outgrew them. 
I had her in a size 2 for 2 years. This is a size 4, so this will probably last her this spring and next spring. They're just really um, well sized. They're the best windbreakers. They're such a great spring, early fall jacket. I got Donnie his first one. I got him an 18 month one. Yeah, an 18 to 24 month one, so I had the sleeves rolled up for him. But this will fit him probably through next spring as well, if not next fall. Not this fall, but the next fall. They're lightly lined in a jersey, so they're soft and they have a bit of warmth to them, but they're not hot. They are water resistant and they fold up to basically nothing. They're super easy to throw into a diaper bag or in the bottom of your stroller or just into your car. They're my, they're my favorite spring lightweight jacket options for the kids. Um, and they're super cute. Look at this one. I don't know if you can really have them moving it around a lot, but look at this pattern. Minnie Mouse. Anyway. Super, super cute, had to share those with you. And that concludes my favorites for the month of April. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'd love to know what some of your favorite things were if you care to share that you're enjoying currently. And I hope you're all well. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Take care. Bye.